Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at this cool app called Rivet which allows you to build GPT powered apps using visual scripting. It's pretty cool. Somebody from Discord recommended it and it's really intuitive to use and it's powerful. You can even build agents with it. We're going to take a look at this program that I built which I also have the Python code for. We're going to review both of them. We'll also look at how we can install Rivet uh, and I'm going to give you a quick crash course on it. What this program does is it takes in this it takes in this strategy tower defense game strategy the game description which I created using the communicated communicating swarm intelligence code that I uh, showcased in the communicating swarm intelligence video you can find this at my website at kohai.live or at my YouTube channel so it takes in this description of the game then we have a system message and a user message and we are generating ten parallel responses from GPT using the end parameter. And then we are appending it to a data set, which is going to be a CSV file. Let's actually run this. All I have to do is just click run. And here we go, we are running. We are using GPT-4 in this case, as you see now, uh, responses are generated in parallel. You can also view this at the chat viewer. While this is ongoing, I'll tell you this has some cool features such as prompt designer. You can add messages, assistance system. It also supports function calling. You can design tests. You can view your chats, and it is a data studio, which we will see once this graph runs. As you see, it's still running. We will have everything in our data set, which we will export to a CSV file. Okay, it is done. Now we can view it. Everything's added in a single row as columns, and at the end, we have this export data set option i'm just going to click that and it will uh, save it to tower defense csv save it yeah now we have our tower defense csv we can actually replicate the same process with this python file we're going to talk about this right later in the video uh, that graph equates to about 85 lines of python code we also have some other files this code uh, runs the extracts the code from the tower defense csv file and saves it into individual files under this code files if if it can manage that and then the third file which is the test code file actually runs it runs each code for five seconds unless there's an error and it asks us for our feedbacks uh, you know, for example this one allows us to put towers but that's it after five seconds it stops it asks for our approval do you approve the code no we don't when we say no it deletes that file we say yes it'll move it to the working code folder which is currently empty so I don't think this one ran, right? Let's see the third one didn't run, I believe. This one allows us to put some towers. Interesting, it kind of works though. So they say yes, so now uh, we have transferred it to here. Let's see, oh, we kind of missed that one. Let's just say no, here we go. This is interesting, oh wow. This works quite well, let's say yes. So you get to see the idea, right? We say no, and it's just, it's an automated system, essentially, which allows us to run through code quickly. This one, no. And this is the last one. There's nothing you can, oh, there we go. This kind of works, say so yes. That's it. So we went through all the files and we have three tower defense game that some, somewhat works, right? So we can actually work with these. The file for the graph, which you can use yourself in the Rivet app, which is a, actually a desktop app you can install on your computer. It will be available at my Patreon for free uh, as a public post. And the Python code files, will, along with the uh, Rivet graph, will be available in the paid tier at my Patreon, uh, where I have over 150 exciting projects. Take a look at it, see if you like it, and thank you for your support. Link will be in the description. You can also find all my videos, 200 plus videos, quickly at my website, www.ecolive.live. Take a look at that as well. You can find the code download links at Patreon there as well. So let's take a look at Rivet and how it works. Let's first start by recreating this graph. Okay, so Rivet works by graphs. You can create graphs and you can actually call this. You can make this entire graph a subgraph and call it from another graph. So it really offers uh, quite a lot of possibilities. Let's just start. So to, to, to get these nodes, all you have to do is just right click and search for from a bunch of nodes like text nodes. And there's extract with, you know, chat or open AI chat completions. There's assemble prompt. You can trim chat messages with a, within a loop. 
I'll just quickly go over it. I mean, I'm not. I'm just going to quickly explain what this. How we do this, right? We're gonna. We can also search. We need a read file node, so I'm just gonna replicate it right under here. Okay, we can give it a path, right? We can click on that. We can click on settings, and it wants it wants to use a current path, taking an input. We don't want that. We're gonna turn it off, so it gives us an ability to browse. I'm just going to point it to the outline which we have, which is a text file. So now we're done with this. We can close this and we need a prompt, one for system, one for user. I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for prompt. Okay. And I'm going to do that again. Search for prompt. Okay. Now we have two prompts. I'm going to click on the setting, set this one to system. Okay. And click on this and set this one to user. I'm going to go here and copy this system message and then paste it uh, into this one, and then the user message. Uh, let me copy this into this one. Now, see, you can take dynamic inputs, which is specified by curly bracket, double curly brackets. So what this does is, right, this is interesting. So this content that we are reading from read file, we can actually connect it to this input. So whatever this input is now this, right here, our you know, variable. So that's pretty cool, right? So now we have a system message and a prompt. Now, next we need the chat. Uh, so we can search for chat. Uh, if you look at the settings, you can set, select your model from here, set your parameters such as temperature, all of that good stuff. And we also have GPT functions for function calling, and then the advanced options, number of choices here. Actually, I'm gonna set this to 10, okay? So this way we're going to produce 10 simultaneous alternatives from this prompt. I'm going to take the system prompt and just plug it into the system prompt and the regular prompt over here. So now we, we can just set it to GPT 3.5 to about 16K for now. So it'll be faster. Next one is a pen to data set. I'm just going to find that node. Here we go. So response is going to connect to its data. If we go to settings, which so I already have a, a data set that I've created, Tower Defense. If you don't already have a data set, then you can search for Create Data Set, okay? And here you can actually create a data set by calling a text input box and giving it a name. For example, Tower Defense 2, okay? And connecting this to its data set name. Okay, and when you run this, you should create a new data set and it should be available within your graph because I have already done this. Let's actually try. If, if I'm now going to just, I can right click on nodes and say run to here. Let's do that. And this is running as you see, and it's done. So if you go to our data studio, we can see that we have now two data sets. One is the one that we had and another one tower defense two. Okay. and what I did was is I created these two nodes and clicked on the second one and click run to here, meaning we just ran these two. Okay, you can right click and delete the nodes too, since we have already created that data set. And now I can go here and select that second one if I wanted. And then I can see, I can select either one through here as well by going to the data studio. Anyway, this is pretty much it. See, as you can see, we have replicated it. You can move around with your left mouse click zoom in and zoom out with your scroll wheel so we can now completely actually delete these and then run it again and then this should actually produce the same result there is no undo in rivet currently and you have to continuously save it you can do that through file and save your project okay just remember that also please let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this i want to make more complex videos on this you can build agents and all kinds of stuff I really want to explore this rivet and I'm having quite a lot of fun with it. And if you like it too, uh, let me know and I'll continue making some more videos on this. Anyway, uh, so like you see this, this is, now we have two graphs uh, under a single graph, right? One of them uses the tower defense uh, and the other one, another one uses tower defense too. They said we can actually run these in parallel. So now we are actually generating responses, one from GPT-4, one from GPT-3.5 Turbo. As you see, these are being generated in real time. Rivet can be slow at times, as you see, it's lagging a little bit, but it's uh, understandable. We are generating 10 responses from each through a two graph. 
Uh, once this is done, our data sets is going to get populated. I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, our, I believe our GPT 3.5 is done. And when we go to our data studio, we see that Tower Defense 2 is now populated. We can export this or clear the data. We can import data to replace this data. So GPT-4 is still running, but when it's done, it's just going to populate the Tower Defense, the first Tower Defense data set. And then we, we can simply export that data set and I save it to a CSV file. And I've already done that. And then you will have your CSV file. So this is how Rivet works in a nutshell, and the second one is done too. And as we see, that one is populated as well. Just keep in mind that they are appended as columns, each, so the was single row and multiple columns. Let's take a look at the Python code next. So to get Rivet, you go to rivet.ironcladapp.com. I'll put the link in the description that you just downloaded. I think it's only available for Windows currently. When you click it, it'll download. After that, you'll have to run that setup. And the thing is, when you run it, right, when you run this, it's going to give you this, it might give you this warning, it says Defender. So it, I guess its registration is not cool, but I mean, I, I thought they have 1500 stars on uh, GitHub. Let's take a look. I thought this was 1700, actually. I thought this was okay to install, but you be the judge of it. I Then all you have to do is click on Run Anyway. So let me show you again. When you get this, click on more info and click on run anyway. After that, it's going to install it. Then you can just launch it. Okay. And once it launches, let's actually delete that graph. Then it's going to start like this empty. You can create new graphs here. You can create nodes here, either by searching or anything. And then by clicking on setting, you can adjust the settings. You can connect nodes by click dragging these things. It's pretty awesome. Just take a look. It's, it's pretty smooth. I mean, I really like it. It gives you your token usage and costs and everything. I think this is pretty new. Probably they'll improve it. Yeah, let me know what you think. Like I said, the graph file will be available for free as a public post on my Patreon. Link will be in the description and the Python codes will be available in a paid tier. Just remember that. This time I tried to comment the code heavily and I also have a readme file. Uh, some of my viewers suggested that, and I'll try to do this for future projects too. As we uh, as we see, the requirements for this is pretty light, just OpenAI and Pygame. Pygame to be able to run, obviously, the tower defense games, right? Uh, because it's built with Pygame. We set our OpenAI API key, and then here we are defining our general parameters model. You can set it here. N is going to be the end parameter, which you can actually pass in through the chat completions, which allows you to generate multiple responses from a single message or prompt. Makes all can set to 2000. We have this read file, which is going to actually read the tower defense.csv. This is a class. And the next one is the chat class. Okay, we already defined a model and, and a system message right here. And then we have a get response method here, which is going to make the call. Right, with the system message and the user message. Here we set the N and the mix tokens. And we create a responses list because this response is going to return multiple responses as a list. So we check for, for N in response uh, choices. So this is, a, this is a bit weird. Okay, so the list, so the, each one of the responses is going to be under choices. So that's why you have to loop over that. And then we are appending to the responses list the message and content from, the, from that N. Now we return that. And this is, we have a class to append to the data set. So this is just going to right, append it to the uh, CSV file, just like the graph did. So we can create the tower defense CSV. And then we have a main function, main function, which where we specify the input file path, which is tower defense outline text, right? This is the general outline of the game, which was generated by the Communicating Swarm Intelligence. I'll put the link to that video in the description as well. I also added that as a tool to Auto AGI. I'll put a link to Auto AGI as well, which is a great uh, agent you can use. Anyway, uh, so then we defined the output data set path. This is Tower Defense CSV. We set the file reader in the chat, data set appender, and then we read the file. And here's our user message we're defining, right? 
and then we get a chat response and we append the message and then we do that that's it so if you were to run this we're going to get the exact same result let's actually quickly do that make sure it's working let's start let's run this code okay we are done and here's our csv file all with the code and everything remember the second one is just going to run over it and save it to python files but unfortunately only some of them made it through that's fine through our checks and the third one is just going to run and test the code right so you can i'm not going to go over this very much it just uses sub process so then it has a lot of checks to make sure everything runs properly it just runs the code and it has a timeout set to five you can set it to anything else so it just runs that code for five seconds unless there's an error right and if we approve it then it saves it to working code if not it deletes it if there's an error it deletes it okay feel free to change this maybe this, this can be removed if yeah anyway here we go we run this just to see this didn't work right no and we can keep running so this one kind of works but doesn't allow us to add so i'm just i'm not going to do this again but this is how it works yeah like I said, the files will be available at Patreon. Links will be in the description. Thank you for watching. And I just like to talk about the Echo Hive AI Academy. I've been learning and recording videos about all my projects, learning about how to build GPT powered apps. And you can, there's, it can be overwhelming to find the right content you're looking for. I have quite a lot of videos, right? So, www.echohive.live serves as a place where you can search for example we did talk about swarm intelligence you can search all my videos related to swarms this is the one i was talking about throughout the video and you can actually read their descriptions watch them here if you like or on youtube and you can find the code download links which will take you to the post which will allow you to download the codes code files for the project uh, at my patreon this is it, and see you in the next video.